If you've ever had the opportunity to watch children play, you'll notice they're full of laughter, joy, compassion, curiosity, and love. They find amazement with so much of what adults consider the mundane, the routine, the boring. From a ladybug walking on a blade of grass, a caterpillar inching its way up a tree, or even a stick lying on the ground. Everything to a child is bright and warm and needs to be investigated. They are filled with an inner light. But what makes your adult life qualitatively different from when you were a child? Where did the curiosity you once had go? When did the days of your life begin to blend into one another without much distinction? Very often we are bombarded with negativity, hourly, daily, weekly, moment by moment. Whether it's some form of political news or an unexpected bill or expense, a vehicle accident, a wildfire or natural disaster, or a violent altercation between human beings, or even your daily routine. All of these events, when taken collectively, can diminish the light you have inside. They can make you cynical, uncaring, and unfortunately disconnected from others and ourselves. That same inner light that you witness in children is still within you. But like any flame that is suffocating or lacking oxygen, it gets smaller and smaller, never quite extinguished, but flickering on the brink. So how may we bring back the ever important light inside us? We cannot control much on the outside, like natural disasters, political decisions, or accidents. But we do have control over our daily mindset and activities. And very often our typical daily activities, our routine if you will, is the reason our light begins to flicker. And. Our routine starts right when we wake up. Perhaps when your alarm goes off, you think, wow, I need to go back to work, a place I don't like. Instead, reframe. Try a more positive perspective, such as, wow, I woke up this morning, and today I will walk with peace and spread joy and goodwill. To all I meet. Morning gratitude is a wonderful way to introduce nurturing oxygen back into your day and into your inner light. Now that you're awake, it is time for breakfast. Skip the sugary cereals, donuts, toasts, bagels, or even worse, fast food breakfasts. You are what you consume. Instead, cook. Dice peppers, chop onions, and slice carrots for your omelet if you choose. Or maybe some hard boiled eggs and fresh fruit and vegetables. Try not to use the reasoning of, I'm not hungry, or I'm not a breakfast eater, or I don't have the time in the morning. These are the mindsets that suffocate your inner light. Instead, use this as a wonderful opportunity to practice mindful cooking. Become engaged with what the earth has so lovingly provided for you. 
When you arrive at work or school, remember, everyone, teachers, co-workers, other students, or supervisors, they are all doing their best, just like you. And, just like you, they will have difficult days too, even though they won't express it, just like you might not. If someone is short with you, or is argumentative, instead of replying with anger or a bruised ego, offer them a smile. They are suffering inside, and a warm, friendly smile is often what this person needs. Compassion, and not more suffering. Compassion is a wonderful source of oxygen for your inner light, as well as for theirs. When it's time for lunch, are you reheating a leftover pizza from a box? Maybe you're going to the drive-thru for a bland, fast food meal. Food that has no color to it, breads or fried food, does not spark joy as Marie Kondo would say. How could it? It's not visually stimulating, nor is it healthy. Heavily breaded food or food that is fried weighs you down. Now this part of your day really begins the night before, or perhaps while making breakfast. It takes mindful effort and thought to prepare. Remember, preparing food connects you to what you're about to ingest or to unite with your being. The smells the texture, the vibrant colors, and the crisp sounds of cutting firm and nutritious foods. Making your lunch visually appealing, as well as wholesome, brings oxygen to your inner light right in the middle of your day. After your day has ended, or... Perhaps it's a weekend. Play. You may not bring out your old toys and dolls like a child, but engage your mind in something creative. Paint. Take pictures. Write. Draw. Maybe you like to scrapbook. Or bake or cook something with a new recipe. Creativity keeps the mind engaged in a way that is exploratory. And when you're exploring, you're engaged. And when you're engaged, oxygen is being diverted from areas of stagnation to the light that is within you. Another wonderful way to increase that oxygen to your inner light is to get outside. It doesn't even need to be a forest or a lake, but even a city street will do. Cities have cats and dogs and birds and insects. Just observe and make it a point to take a few moments to perhaps watch that bird fly. Open your curiosity from, oh, it's just a bird, to, I wonder where it's going. Is it looking for water or food? Is it flying back to its nest? Engaging curiosity helps bring back that much-needed oxygen to your inner light. Your inner light has been hidden by years if not decades of routine, fear, anxiety, societal pressures and constructs. A light may only shine as bright as the flow of oxygen to the wick. To change the flow, you must change your mindset to one of love and empathy and curiosity and non-judgment towards yourself. Only then, when you begin to brighten 
the inner light that you have inside you.